I have a state management solution in React that is infinitely simpler than Redux, less restricting than React Context, more lightweight than Zustand, and is as easy as using the standard uState hook. This solution makes React State global and very easy to manage. By the end of this video, you'll never want to go back to anything else. What is this solution that I'm talking about? I'm talking about using Atomic State. The idea of atomic state is very simple. State is stored in what is called atoms. Atoms are just units that contain a single piece of state. Anywhere in your app, in any component, you can use an atom. And that atom will look the same anywhere it is accessed. If I change the value of the atom in one component, it updates in real time in every single other component. So it is literally like using regular React state, meaning the use state hook, except that it is global. That's all the atomic state really is. It allows components to communicate and share state very simply. The library that has an incredibly simple yet effective implementation of atomic state is Jotai. It is so simple that the main documentation is made up of four main pages, all of which are really short and very straight to the point. I'll show you exactly how it works and exactly how to use it. As always, when working with some external library, we'll first need to import it into our code. In our terminal, we can get it installed by running npm i Jotai. Once we have Jotai installed, it's incredibly easy to use. No big config files or anything else that we need to mess with. The first thing that we need to do is initialize an atom, which is what we call pieces of Jotai state. We can do this by simply writing const name of the atom, which we will call count atom equals, and then we're going to call the atom function from Jotai. Make sure we get this atom imported from Jotai. And then in here, we can pass in whatever we want the initial value to be. For our case, since we're using a count, we will start it at zero. It's important that we initialize this outside of a React component, that way it only gets initialized once. Now, in order to use this atom, we can use the useAtom hook inside any React component, which for the purpose of your understanding is used identically to how useState is used. To make a count state in our app, we can simply go into the app component here, and we can write const brackets count set count equals useAtom. As you can see, this is identical syntax to how we use the use state hook in standard React. The only difference now is what we pass into these parentheses here. Instead of passing in the initial value, we already did that. We just need to pass in the atom that we created, which we called count atom. And we'll make sure we also get this use atom hook imported from Jotai. Now we can use count and set count exactly how we would use normal use state. This is the state itself, and this is the setter function for the state. And here down below, I've set up a very simple scenario. I just have a div that has the span that is displaying the count. And I have a button here that whenever it is clicked will increment the count by one. And as you can see, if I go over here and test it, it behaves exactly like you would expect normal React state to behave. The only main difference being that we initialize it as an atom outside of the React component first. And then whenever we want to use that state inside of a React component, we can just call the use atom hook passing the atom, and then it acts essentially identical to use state. So what's the hype all about then? Well, now this state can be used globally, absolutely anywhere in the app, and it still behaves just like use state. Let's say now I have two components being rendered out, one that will display the count, this display state, and one that will increment the count, increment state. It is legitimately the exact same thing we just had, except we've just extracted the logic into two completely separate components. If we want to get access to this count state in the component that is displaying it, we can again just do the same thing we did up top, just make a use atom call like this to get access to the count, and we can do the exact same thing in increment state so we can get access to the set count function. And now if we save it, we should be good to go. I can go over here and test it, and you can see it behaves in the exact same way, despite the fact that the logic for showing the count and setting the count is contained in entirely separate components. But there's a quick optimization thing that we can do. If we go into the first component, this display state, that is just displaying the count out, you notice that we're not using this set count function. If we're using the state, but we're not using its setter function, we could actually go ahead and delete these square brackets here. And instead of using use atom, we could use another function from Jotai called use atom value. And this just gets the state itself, not the setter function. So we can get rid of this to just get access to the count. This use atom value just returns the state. So that way you're not wasting space and destructuring a function that you won't actually use. The exact same thing goes for if you're only using the setter function, like in this example right down here. For example, in this component, we're not actually using the state. But this can actually run into an optimization problem. Because we're using use atom, this component is going to re-render every single time count changes. But this component doesn't need to re-render at all. 
to fix this, all we have to do is just like last time, we can remove the brackets here. And instead of using use atom, we can use use set atom. And again, if we save it, this will behave the exact same way as before. We've just optimized it so that we are not destructuring functions or state that we're not going to be using. So basically, long story short, if you're going to use both the state and the setter function in the same React component, you can use it exactly how you do use state. And you would do it like this using use atom. If you're not doing it this way and you just need a setter function, you can get use set atom. And if you just need the state itself and not the setter function, you can do use atom value. Now, even though this example is super, super oversimplified, we've just effectively created a global state that works between components without having to use props at all. To prove to you that this state is truly global and is updated in real time, I'm gonna take this stuff from display state. I'm gonna go back into our app up here. I'm just going to copy and paste it up into here. Let's move this span back down into here. Get rid of this return here. And now we are displaying the count in both the app component and in the display state component. So if I go ahead and save this now, you'll see we have two numbers here. If I click increment, notice how it increments in both of them at the exact same time. So it's as if app and display state were both sharing the exact same piece of state. Pretty cool, right? There's no massive setup process like Redux or other popular state management tools and no having to do some strange wrapping around your components to make context providers just atomic state that behaves like use state and is global. I want to make a quick note that normally you're not going to have all your components in the exact same file. So this atom probably shouldn't be there either. What I normally do is I would take this and in a separate file that I usually call atoms.ts or something along those lines, I would have this definition for the atom actually in here. I would just export it, make sure this atom is imported here. And then wherever I want to use this atom, I can just go into that file and I can just go ahead and import count atom from atoms, and then everything will behave in the exact same way. I'll give you another simple example to show you exactly how the state is actually global. So I've written this code here. In our app, we just have a nav bar that is at the very top of our page, which is this purple nav bar you see here on the right hand side. And then we have this dashboard, which is this green box over here. Inside that dashboard is a card here. And inside that card is the button. And that button is the one that says click me. And it looks something like this. So essentially we have a nav bar plus three nested components inside of dashboard. I have a file here called atoms.ts. And in here we just initialize an atom called color atom that we are defaulting to the string purple. All that I want to do in this entire scenario is make this button right here that says click me change the background color of this nav bar up top whenever it is clicked. If we navigate to our button component, you can see that I already have most of the logic set up, minus actually setting the color, which we'll do right now using Jotai. Because we're only going to be using the atom setter function in this component, up here in this component, let's just make a setter function for our atom by typing const set color equals use set atom, because again, we're only using the setter function, not the actual state itself. And then we can pass in color atom. And again, we're gonna make sure both of these things are imported from their respective places. And all of this code is doing in this handle click down here is it's taking a random color by just taking this array right here of rainbow colors that we have, and it's selecting a random one. And then it is calling set color, which is the function that we just created to whatever random color was chosen, which means that anytime set color is called like in this button and this button is actually clicked, then we are going to set the color atom to one of these colors right here. If I go ahead and save this and head to our nav bar where we actually care about getting the color itself, we also have most of the logic set up in here. We just need to get the color out of the Jotai atom. We can do that by going up here and just writing const color equals use atom value. And again, it's use atom value instead of use atom because we're just getting this data itself, not the setter function. And we will pass in color atom. And now we have access to the color, which is in the form of an atom. So just so we're entirely on the same page, this nav bar is simply getting the color and the button is simply setting the color. Now our background color is getting set to whatever color is in the color atom. Despite the fact that these two components, the navbar and the button, are two entirely separate components that are multiple layers apart, we've connected them with shared state in basically two lines of code. If I save this now, 
and I go over to our site and I start clicking on this, notice how the nav bar is changing color. Again, in this button component here, we are actually setting the atom every time it is clicked. And then the nav bar is receiving that change and it's updating its background color using the style tag. It's pretty neat that we're able to connect these so easily. The very last thing that I want to cover in this video is how to take one atom and use multiple instances of it in different places at the exact same time. For example, let's say you have 10 card components that all use the exact same atom, where they can all display the atom value and increment it. But wait, if all 10 cards are rendered at the same time, all referencing this one state atom, they're all going to be competing for this atom at the exact same time. I can show you exactly what I mean by if I click one of these buttons here to increment count, on one card, it increments the count for all of them. Any of the cards will increment every single other card. And 99% of the time, this is exactly what you want, because the whole point of using Jotai is to make React State global. Sometimes, however, the situation might arise where we want to use atoms, but not completely global, like restraining each atom to an individual card. Well, your first obvious thought might be to just make the state an actual use state in each card to keep it local. But this card example is super, super oversimplified. What if in an actual scenario, you had cards like this that were actually really complex components that had a ton of children and you wanted to let each card have its own atom to make state sharing easier within the card. In other words, scoping each atom to a specific component so it's not entirely global. If you go this route, the solution to this problem of competing for the same instance of the same atom is not to go into this atom file and just copy and paste this 10 times. Jotai actually has a feature called scoping that allows us to use the same atom in multiple places at once without risk of having them overlap or interfere with each other. The way we do this is by using a component called scope provider. How we implement this is very, very simple. We can open up our terminal and we can run npmi jotai scope just like this. If I now want every card to have access to this count atom, but each count atom should stay unique to its own component, or in other words, scope to its own component, all we have to do is wrap the component in this scope provider right here, which we can import from Jotai Scope, the library we just installed. We want to make sure this has an opening and a closing tag, and that we wrap our card inside of it. The very last thing we need to do is just give this a prop that we are going to call atoms. This is an array by default, so even if we only have one value, we'll still want to make them square brackets, and then we will just pass in count atom, which we can just import from atoms. What scope provider does is make it so that the atom we pass down stays completely scoped to everything that is a child of it, but it doesn't exist outside of that. In our case, this is the card component. They call this a subtree in Jotai, referring to this child and all its possible children or adjacent components. By mapping over 10 different cards, we have created 10 of these scope providers, each with their own card, meaning we now have 10 scoped subtrees. So they are all using the exact same atom, the count atom, but we have effectively created 10 instances of that atom. And that is actually all it takes to do this. Now if I go ahead and save this file, all of our state for a card is going to reset, and if I click on a single card, it's only going to increment the state for that card. Almost exactly like use state works if we were to do a use state hook in each card individually and just scope the count locally. However, we're using an atom and is behaving in that exact same way. So this is how it behaves with scoping. And this is how it behaves without scoping. If we just remove this, how we had it before, oops, like this, it behaves just like this. So again, no scoping, making everything global is the default behavior of Jotai, and that is probably what you're going to want the vast majority of times. However, if you do have an instance where you need to scope state to a specific component, like in our case, the card, we can do it just like this. And now the state is local, despite the fact that we're still using atoms. In summary, Jotai is amazingly simple for state management. You make an atom using the atom function from Jotai, and then to mimic the exact same behavior as useState, but as global state with atoms, you can use the use atom hook where you just pass in the atom that you initialized. Then you have access to the state itself plus its setter function, and again, behaves exactly like you would expect useState to behave. If you want to just get the state, you can use use atom value. If you want to just get the setter function, you can use useSetAtom. 
If you want to make multiple instances of the exact same atom, you can use this scope provider and wrap the component or subtree you want to use them in. And that's really all there is to Jotai. It really is that simple. I hope you were able to learn something from this video, and I honestly encourage you to use Jotai if you're wanting an incredibly simple way to handle global state in React. I think you'll find it very useful and very nice to use. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on it. Take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.